So welcome uh, to the first parallel workshop uh, of the Open Science Fair. That's um, day one and um, Open Science Fair team is uh, fostering local and global open science communities, which is very much aligned with uh, the topic of this workshop, uh, Open Air Connect, uh, co-design workshop with uh, research communities. Uh, and um, it's going to be an excellent uh, session. And uh, we chose uh, Zoom meeting mode for the session because we really wanted to make it uh, interactive. Uh, so it's a Zoom meeting, there is no Q&A here. Let's use um, chat for questions. And uh, also please, if you want to ask your question, just raise your hand and uh, speak up because that's, as you see, we are a small group and we really want to have conversation. Uh, if you also want to introduce yourself in the chat, uh, please do so. Because we, we can see your names, but we might not know who you are. And by the way, I'm Irina Kuchma and I manage Open Access Program in um, Eiffel and uh, also Training and Skills Standing Committee in Open Air. Uh, as you see, we are recording uh, this event uh, and we'll make recording available on uh, Open Science Fair YouTube channel and also on Zenodor. And it's a meeting mode, so if you don't mind, uh, please mute your mic if you're not speaking um, to have smoother interactions. Uh, and uh, for social media, we use the hashtag OSFair2021. And then we have a code of conduct and um, it's uh, on the website at the conference, but I also put a link uh, in, uh, in the chat there. And uh, I guess that's all from me. Thanks for joining uh, this workshop, uh, enjoy it. And I'll hand over to Alicia Bardi, who is uh, a mastermind behind Open Air Connect uh, and she and her colleagues and my colleagues will uh, walk you through. So. Thank you. Thank you, Irina. And I will share my screen so that we can start uh, this workshop. Okay. Okay, perfect. So my name is uh, Alessia Vardi from the Italian uh, National Research Council. I'm the product manager of Open Air Connect. Uh, and with me, uh, you can see my colleague Miriam Baglioni, uh, Argiro Coco Giannaki from the Athena Research Center, and Andre uh, Vieria from the University of Migno. And they will ha help me out in the moderation uh, of this workshop. So what's the goal? Uh, the goal is to improve the Open Air Connect community gateways. And I really hope that this workshop will also be an opportunity for you to learn uh, about the experience that you have in your own uh, research communities uh, on open science practices and challenges and lessons learned. So what I would like to have at the end, uh, at the end of the workshop is to shape the priorities, the high level roadmap for Open Air Connect so that we can better support the implementation of open science practices in the community. Uh, so we will heavily work with a mural board and I'm going to share um, the link uh, of the board on the chat in a second so that we can go all there. So let me take it from here. Okay. So here it is. So now if you click on the link I shared in the chat, you should see, you should see this board. And we can have some instruction on how to use it. Uh, because it could be the case that uh, this is the first time that you use a similar tool 
which is basically a whiteboard. So it's very easy. So you don't have to worry, this is the first time. So you can find some basic instructions below the welcome panel here. And if you get lost, you can always follow me by hovering on my avatar, which is this one, and click follow me. So just to show you how to do it, I will do it on this one. So if you click on follow Irina, you will follow wherever Irina goes. And you can do it also with my avatar, so that if you get lost, uh, you will you will get where I am. Uh, I will set a timer to help us stay in the time. So when the time comes, you will hear a sound, which means that we have to conclude and move to the next part of the workshop. So, for example, let's put uh, a clock of four minutes now. Uh, you have edit rights on the board, and this means that you can add and remove sticky notes. Um, all the panels that we will use are locked, so you cannot mess up with the board by mistake, but please be kind and do not delete uh, the sticky notes that others have added. So now we can try it out. So let's go to the About Me section by clicking on this button. Okay, so here you can add a sticky note with a double click, just like I did. And if you click on it, you have this menu, so you can change the color, you can change also the shape. So for example, from a rectangle, you can turn it to uh, a round sticky note. So um, now you, you can try it. So please create a sticky note, add your name, your affiliation, and tell us something about you. So if you, for example, if you're a manager of a gateway that already exists, uh, or if you used a gateway as a researcher, or if you're planning to, to use a, a gateway, or even, I mean, it could be the case that you never heard about OpenR Connect and you want to know more. So this is also an option. So like uh, Lizana said, Okay, so she's not using uh, a connect gateway. So I hope that an external eye can help you out as well uh, in this workshop. And when you're done, uh, you can go below and you will see a map. So you can take a pin and move it uh, where you are. So it's too hard to put it in the place because the map is too large. You can you will see that we have a Europe map below. So here you may find it easier to put your mark. And I will put mine in Pisa, which is in the wonderful country of Italy that yesterday won the European uh, volleyball championship again. <laughs> and uh, Okay, so let's see what we have here. This is interesting. Okay. So please don't be shy. Let me let me check where where you where are you? Okay, so thank you. So I see someone from France, Spain, Germany, Sweden. We are from the United States. Okay, Greece. Ah, huge sticky notes. <laughs> so. Okay, very good. Someone from Sicily, Portugal, Germany again. Good, very nice. Okay. 
Okay. So here, this is the sound that our time has ended. So we are ready to start. So we go to our agenda. And as you can see, next to a panel, you will see a link that you can click so that we go to the, to the agenda. So the plan is to have an initial discussion about open science and its challenges in your research communities. Then I have prepared uh, a short presentation of Open Air Connect that will serve as starting point for our brainstorming about uh, what can be improved and how to support you and your research communities in adopting open science practices. And I will refer to several open air services. So if you want to know more, you can go here at open air services at a glance and you will find the link um, to the open air portal where you have a, a short description of the services. Uh, after the brainstorming, we go into the heart of the workshop and we'll address specific actions uh, to improve the gateways. And finally, we will shape up uh, our high level roadmap or at least a set of priorities to be addressed. So are there uh, any questions in the chat that we should? Uh... No, I don't see any. Okay, perfect. So let's break the ice and let's talk about open science. I prepared uh, a, a sort of support section on open science just to review the basics, uh, refresh some concepts. So maybe we can, do the, we can go there for a minute here on the intro about open science. So if you are here in this workshop, you probably know the basics, but it's always useful to remind that it's not only about open access to publications. The goal of open science is to have reproduci reproducible research, transparent evaluation of the research process, and go beyond the publication-centric reward policies. And at the same time, open science pushes uh, to maximize the impact and um, to society and the innovation potential. So in the round boxes below, you can see uh, some of the main open science practices, open access to publications, sharing any type of research products, the definition of data management plans uh, to ensure that the data is not buried on a USB drive that gets lost, uh, the description of the research outcome with rich metadata, including links between the resources that have been used and produced uh, in a research activities. And different communities may have specific practices in place or specific challenges that are seen as barriers towards the implementation of open science practices and thus the objectives uh, are not achieved or at least not fully achieved. So with this in mind, uh, we can go to the um, discussion area, which we can find here. And we have about 10 minutes to brainstorm about the barriers and the priorities on your communities with regards to open science. So let me set the timer to 10 minutes. And as you can see, I already added some uh, known challenges. But now it's your turn to speak, to add your thoughts, uh, so feel free to add a sticky note with the barriers, challenges, priorities in your communities, or just raise your hand and speak up if you prefer. So I see we have a sharing training materials. This is also important. So let me zoom out a little bit okay perfect so the for example you can think about challenges you face as project manager for example 
or cultural barriers, technological barriers. Um, so I see new things coming up. So the research evaluation system doesn't encourage open science practices. I'll find open data. And yes, For example, are there any barriers for you for sharing the source code of your research software? Or are there any policy in your research community or infrastructure that you don't know how to satisfy? Oh. Okay, so we have another sticky note about build bridges between top-down policies and bottom-up initiatives. This is a very uh, interesting challenge and uh, a real opportunity. How shared data produced from companies without patents? Okay. And what um, in our experience in Connect, uh, for example, we know that there is uh, a priority in some communities to raise awareness of open science practices. So this is what this sticky note uh, is about. And this is somehow related also to, uh, to this bigger sticky note about the researchers that usually don't know how to create high quality metadata. So common data structures for interoperability and reusable data flows. And this is very important, I believe, to achieve the interoperability, uh, sorry, to achieve the reproducibility of research. Understanding GDPR and what limitation it imposes. And let me zoom here. Some researchers worry about someone stealing their research. Okay. Understanding compliance requirements. Okay. So free your um, free your mind. And think about how you could uh, help your research communities at being more open to open science practices. Also, from the technical point of view, because sometimes, I mean, if you were in the panel, you know that. Okay, there are a lot of cultural barriers or um, we need a cultural shift, but sometimes we, uh, we as researchers uh, are really blocked by technological gaps. So I don't know, for example, is an open repository available for your community? Or do you have a way in your domain to add links between data, software, and publications. What are the difficulties that you encounter when you want to publish a paper in open access? Or as in a research infrastructure manager, for example, are you offering a service for open science? And is the survey is the service actually used by researcher? Or do you feel like uh, they don't know that you are offering this service to them, or they don't know how to use it. Mm. 
Good, so we have senior researchers often discourage open science practices among their junior colleagues. Okay, this is again about the cultural shift that needs to be done. Okay, and then we have a red priority include open science practices in the researchers' evaluation career progression. Okay. Okay, there is an addition here. Uh, so the senior researchers discourage their junior colleagues and junior colleagues may be discouraged to properly share their research due to lack of experience and training. Yeah, that's true. Okay, another sticky note said says that sustaining services and securing a steady stream of funding to keep them is a great challenge yes it is a challenge and i think there is um, a dedicated workshop probably tomorrow about the about this topic so how to sustain uh, in the long term the open infrastructure for for research Okay. I don't know. Uh, Andre, Miriam, Argiro, would you like to add something? I don't know. Maybe if uh, some service uh, would allow a researcher to interlink directly uh, publications and uh, data or software used to. Uh, get the results that have been published could be helpful so maybe there is also the need of services that automatically allow the publication of uh, the deposition of publication and automatically interlink them with the data set and software services When, so services for automatic linking between publications, uh, software, and data. Yes. Okay. Okay, so a new one, I think it's going to be the last one because the time for this part is almost ended and it's how to find software and codes in one place. Okay. I will put it next to the how to find open data because they are both related to the discovery uh, the data and literature deluge in a way okay so perfect we can go back to the agenda i see that you like the discussion on the board and adding the sticky notes so this is good it will be valuable input for uh, the next phases of the workshop what you what you wrote uh, there. So the next part is a brief presentation of Open Air Connect, and I will highlight which are the features and which are the gaps that we know. So the possible improvements 
uh, also based on your experience or your your thoughts uh, that we will share afterwards in the brainstorming session. So I will switch, I will switch back to the PowerPoint. Okay. Okay, so to start with, what is Open Air Connect? So Open Air Connect delivers on-demand open research gateways for research communities. And the goal is to lower the barriers that hinder the adoption of open science practices in the research communities. And in particular, we address the literature and the deluge, the dispersion of research products which are scattered across different repositories and scholarly communication sources, the lack of community awareness in the sense that in some cases communities lack awareness on themselves, so they don't know that there is a community in a specific research topic, for example, uh, while in other cases there is lack of awareness about open science practices. And finally, the lack of open science tools and services. And we have to say that some communities are more mature than others in this sense. Uh, so the goal here is to support those communities that are not yet uh, mature in terms of services and tools and help them shift towards an effective implementation of open science publishing practices. To do this, the gateway offers a community view of the open air research graph and for those who don't know what the open air research graph is um, it is a big collection of metadata records describing entities of the research life cycle so projects organizations publications data sets software um, and these entities are linked to each other and form a graph as the name says so open air builds this graph by aggregating metadata records from many different sources from all over the world. Uh, we include Crossref uh, that is used by most publishers to assign a DOI for their publications. We include the data site, which is the uh, another DOI, DOI agency uh, focused on data sets, although data site also assigns DOI for other types of research products. We have ORCID and very, very important, we have a big network of uh, institutional and thematic repositories. And at the end, we have a graph with more than 150,000 publications. And it's hard for a community to find what's relevant for it. So this is why we offer this community view the slice of the graph that is relevant for the community. Uh, but the gateway is more than this. So you can see it um, and as an open science toolkit, so an entry point to tools for the implementation of open science in the community. So in this slide, uh, you can see the homepage of one of the gateways that we delivered for um, the community in transport research via the H2020 project Be Open, uh, which ended this year. So on the top, uh, you can find the logo, the name of the community, and, uh, and a menu with several actions. So the manage menu item is only for uh, gateway curators, so the managers of the community. Uh, but the others are available to all researchers and we are trying to give advice on where to deposit, on how to link different types of research outputs, how to uh, also, I mean, a way to search in the literature deluge. And also what we have an about menu about, about the gateway. Uh, the home page also have this uh, very useful uh, that's a place where you can 
start your search and you can also go on the advanced search to specify uh, more specific criteria and you can also see um, information about the community so the description of the community the information about the gateway curators and the configuration that they have selected to identify the research products so if you go into the uh, actions uh, into the practices of open science um, we have two main uh, functionality one is the functionality for the position and here the gateway gives you a way to find a journal or repository where you can publish in open access and also you can find uh, the Zenodo communities uh, of your discipline as they were suggested by the gateway curators with the link functionality you can add the links between research outcomes and projects so you can add links for example between a publication software and data sets and you can link uh, any of these to a project but you can also link research outcomes to to your community so that a research outcome that is not available in the gateway will become available via the gateway and you can also link your outcomes to your ORCID profile so you can keep an up-to-date record of your uh, personal profile on ORCID. Then we have the search functionality and this generates all the features of our main discovery portal which is the open air explore uh, portal so you can search across providers languages countries you have a lot of filters that you can use to drill down your search including the one uh, filter by access right so that you can filter out the data sets that are closed for example uh, you will find the links to the ORCID ID of the authors, uh, will help you find an open access version of an article, and, uh, and much more. So we have the connection with the annotation service of EUDAT, we do note, uh, and you can download the search results, uh, the basic metadata. And of course, you have a link uh, for from let's say from open air to the repository that hosts the publication or the data sets or the software so that you can easy access um, to the actual content uh, of the research product so uh, thinking about potential improvements I don't know, do, do you think that there is any specific search functionality or uh, integration missing for um, when you search? Or maybe something that would be needed for the community curators? Or for example, for the deposit functionality, now you can search among all open air sources. And this implies that you can also search for uh, non-open access journals that open air has, because uh, because we get it from Crossref. And you can also search for institutional or general purpose repositories, which maybe are out of scope of a given community. Uh, so we have some ideas, but uh, it would be nice to have some feedback uh, from you uh, in this regard so to guide how, how we could change uh, the approach and better support the open access, the position and publishing um, in your community. Let's see, there is a yeah. question in a, in a chat and I'll read it to you. Yes. On, um, if I understand correctly, all data and software presented in a community here is already detected by open air. So this is, this is not a submission system, right? Um, for example, the service doesn't support the creation of DOIs for newly deposited data. Yes, exactly. So you should consider um, the gateway as a place where you can discover, but you cannot use it to deposit. So to deposit, you need to find a repository or as an auto community for your, uh, for your domain that you can use for the position. Then, the gateway only helps you at finding, at discovering the research outputs, 
because we will get metadata from a lot of different places. So you don't have to go to four, five, six repositories to find what you're looking for. You just come here and, uh, and you will find it. And this question also linked to my next slide, uh, which is the community gateway configuration. So how do we say that a research outcome is an outcome of the community? So the gateway curators can configure a, a set of criteria. So they can specify a list of keywords, a list of projects, the data source. So um, the sources that are hosting the full text uh, of the publications or, or the data or the source code of the software. Um, the list of Zenodo communities that are relevant for the specific field and the list of organizations because we can also uh, include the products if the uh, affiliation is uh, of one of the authors is an organization that works in the specific domain. And all this information uh, is used to identify the products. And we have uh, also our automatic algorithms that uh, exploits the full text and the metadata of the records uh, in order to find and automatically update the gateway with, uh, with new products. Sometimes we are not able to find <laughs> all the products of our community, and this is why uh, researchers can also use the link functionality. But here again, I mean, these, these are the criteria of inclusion that we thought there may be others that we should include and our experience also showed that sometimes there are too many projects and too many data sources of one domain to select. So we should find a way to simplify this action. So maybe consider uh, a functionality to add uh, things in the configuration in bulk, uh, but we need to mitigate the risk of adding wrong items to the configuration because, for example, in the energy research domain and we couldn't add all the products uh, all the projects with energy in the name because that will include a lot of projects about high energy physics which are completely out of scope of the uh, energy community and also uh, new projects new sources are regularly added to the open air research graph so we should find a way maybe to inform the gateway curators about uh, new potential sources and projects. How can we do it? How often should we do it? These are something that we can think of. And then the um, the ABA, uh, about menu. So it's it's about the gateway. So it contains information about technical and methodological and methodology aspects. And the gateway creators can change the text of the pages, can enable or disable the pages. And uh, we are wondering if we could restructure uh, this about menu also based on the expectation of the gateway creators and the expectation of the researchers. So what would you expect to find in this about menu? And finally, uh, Last but not least, I would say, uh, we need to shape a way to promote uh, other services and resources for open science that are available out there. And they can be open air services, uh, they can be community services, but they can also be uh, other uh, services in the European Open Science Cloud. So the, the idea, the question that we would like to reply is that how can we let the user feel like they are in the right place where they can find the things that they need to implement open science and to overcome the barriers that they have. So this was my very brief presentation of Open Air Connect and the things that uh, we could potentially change. So we can go now to the brainstorming area. 
Can I ask and, a question uh, about keywords, Alicia? Because I, I've been wondering um, how do we deal with, with the keywords that we fix uh, when we start the dashboard? Uh, and I'm speaking uh, about COVID-19 because that's, that's a community where I'm one of the curators. Uh, and uh, when we started, we didn't really include pandemic because I mean, pandemic is such a broad word. No one would, of course, COVID-19 is a pandemic, but you wouldn't use pandemic to describe COVID-19 back then when we were creating this community. But now I see a lot of publications that even don't mention COVID-19, but they mention just pandemic because everyone understands that pandemic now is COVID-19. And then I think that that's a challenge to us because uh, if we include that, then we will get uh, all sorts of pandemics uh, that happened before and will happen after. But then if we don't include it as, as a keyword, then it also limits uh, and uh, what if we move next to climate change, for example, then how, how can we describe that? How can we find uh, keywords that would cover biodiversity and climate change, for example? And I don't know whether you, you've ever thought about this going small and going big with, uh, with keywords and with uh, limitations of community. Mm -hmm. oh, I understand your point. It's a very, very interesting uh, comment. So what, um, what we could do is to allow the gateway creators to specify uh, other constraints. So for example, uh, include all the records, all the publications with the subject pandemic, but only if they have been published after 2019. Mm -hmm. uh, yep. but then, of course, if there is a pandemic of something else, you will have to go back and, you know, fine tune the the range of the mm. year. Uh, it will be interesting too. I think Harry, uh, because the COVID nineteen is a good example, because uh, we needed also to activate to develop uh, a full text mining algorithm for COVID nineteen in order to uh, to have a, a good coverage. So maybe this is something that Harry uh, uh, addressed. I don't know if he's still here. I saw him before. Yes, I'm, I'm still here, uh, but not fully uh, engaged. Sorry, because I'm doing uh, I'm, uh, participating in something else at the same time. But uh, are you talking about like the dates? I heard of this uh, comment about pandemic as a keyword. This is very yeah yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe we, maybe we could similar, add. Yeah, we had, I remember some when developing the X mining, something similar with um, uh, basically, uh, uh, I think, yeah, coronavirus as a term and things like that. And again, we used, uh, I think, dates to uh, kind of filter out uh, what we were talking about. So, um, yeah, if, I mean, that could be done enhancing the, the text mining with the word pandemic, but then having some other checks to make sure, you know, and things like that. So, yeah, it's a good point, though. Yeah. Thanks a lot. Okay. So, I'm checking if there are questions on the chat. But I think this is not the case. Okay. So maybe the, we can start on the feedback grid. Uh, so you can add a sticky note in the proper place to tell which are the things that work well in the gateway, what need to be changed, uh, which additional features we should evaluate, and which instead are the features that are completely missing and you are surprised that you cannot see them because they are uh, somehow obvious for you. Uh, if you don't know where to add your comment, you can leave a sticky notes uh, on the right of the grid and then we will find uh, a proper place together. Um, for example, what Irina mentioned before, I think it's a new ideas that we should try. So maybe uh, evaluate additional criteria uh, with the keywords.
okay, to better fine tune um, the coverage of, of the gateway via the keywords. Then I see, okay, needs to change. Very broad or high interest research topics, research item selection. Okay. This sticky notes is not completely clear to me, so I kindly invite <laughs> the participant who wrote it uh, to speak, to explain a little bit better uh, this point. Yeah, hi. I was just trying actually to take a note from the discussion, like when a research topic is uh, very broad, like coronavirus that is highly interest or any other very broad term, it will collect a lot of research items like it actually does uh, now in the service. And so it will be, it's difficult to like navigate all those items some point and yeah that was that was it so how can you prioritize when you have so many hits um like in, in the coronavirus example yes we have to say that currently the ordering of the search results um are not based uh, on on any other criteria than the score that it has uh, based on your search. Uh, then you can order by date, you can order by relevance, uh, but that's it. So probably we could think about uh, some other criteria for ordering because we are already collaborating uh, with Athena Research Center and um, the Beep Finder uh, service, which calculates uh, the popularity and the impact of research publications. So probably we, we could exploit um, this service in order to provide <clears throat> an ordering of the search results, which are um, different from the one that we currently have. Okay. Then I see combine H20. Thank you, Lisanna, for this suggestion. So I can see combine H2020 projects according to thematic call area. Okay, yes, this is something that we can try because um, we have this information for H2020 projects and I hope that we will have this information also for the upcoming um, funding program of the European Commission, so uh, Horizon Europe. So this is uh, something that we should try, yes, definitely. Then the ability to set up email alerts based on saved search. Okay, this is an interesting feature, but in fact, we also lack the possibility to save a search. So <laughs> this is a double suggestion. And then we have implement a way to capture the feedback from the users, for example, to upvote, downvote the search results based on their relevance to them. Mm. Okay, so um, I don't know if the person who wrote the sticky note wants to add something, for example, if he saw this kind of uh, functionality in any other portals. Um, ah, okay, it's still Zanna. So uh, have you seen this, this feature? 
No, actually, and I even I was even wondering if this would be in accordance with with open science features or, or not at all, <laughs> because um, I mean, it's it will still based on the opinion of the user, but to me, the fact that there is no clear ordering of the results is really kind of a blocking feature for, for me to use the system because um, I don't really know um, what are the hits and how can I navigate them now. So um, I was just trying to think about a way to, to order them somehow. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what I can write for sure is maybe improve. This is going to be a little bit technical, but don't be scared. So the configuration of the index server um, with proper weights on important metadata fields. Because of course, is a if a keyword of your search is found in the title, uh, it's more important than if you find it only in the abstract or in any other uh, metadata fields. So, okay. So, um, I have another. Uh, oh, sorry. Please, please. Just wanted to go back to saving searches. Uh, I was looking at Europe PubMed Central uh, and their coronavirus articles and preprints. They allow exporting citations as well. And um, I don't know whether that's a functionality that we could also offer export in addition to saving searches, also exporting citations. Mm -hmm. So um, we already have. Uh, this functionality. So on the one hand, we have the possibility to, to get the text to cite one specific publication. Uh, but if your search results uh, are below, uh, I think, one or two thousands, you also have the options to download uh, some basic metadata records about your search results uh, in a CSV. And I think also in HTML format. So um, we are only limited in, in, in the numbers of rows in this CSV, basically. Uh, so the, the search must be done by you know dr drilling down in the, in the proper way. So it's it's very similar to what you can see in the in the portal for COVID-19 publications of the WHO. They have a similar, um, a similar approach. So show statistics or metrics of access or consume of data, uh, yes. And um, we already have some because one of the services that we have uh, in open air is the usage counts, which is uh, actually doing this. So basically we, um, for the repositories that uh, enabled this service, uh, we keep track of the download that uh, were done on the repository side. We keep track of the views on the landing page on the hosting repository and we also keep the view and this we do it for any repository we keep the view on our uh, pages of the portal uh, so this is something that that you can see maybe i can show you Uh, I don't know. We open. Close. 
Okay, if I am not wrong, if we have Mino, no. I will show it on Explorer. First of Mino. I'm choosing this one because I know that um, it integrates fully uh, the statistics. <clears throat> so, for example, Okay, so th this is the log of the service usage counts. So if you click, you can see that um, these publications were was downloaded two times uh, on the repository of the University of Mino. There were zero open reviews, and now we expect this counter to increase <laughs> in the in the next uh, weeks when the counters will be updated. And then you have the total views. So the views on OpenAir and the views on the Austin repository. So this is something that, that we have. If this is what was intended, I would move this sticky note here. Uh, OK, we have a work well link functionality and easy way to claim research results to the community gateway. And our time is up, so we can go back to our agenda. And we can start um, with the heart of this workshop, so we can enter the co-design se se uh, co session. And so go to the design area. Okay, there we go. So I left uh, I left this area very open. I divided the area in four blocks, each addressing a different topic. So one is about how to ease access to information about open science, like training material, community best practices. And this is something that was also highlighted in the, in the first brainstorming that we had. Um, then we have section two, which is about um, how to link the, uh, to the existing open air and community services via the gateway. The third is for uh, specific actions, specific uh, ideas for the link, deposit, and search functionality of the gateway. And the four is for the content selection criteria. So I see that it's 5.30, so we have a little bit less time than, uh, than expected, but I think we can, uh, we can spend uh, something like uh, 20 minutes on this section, and then we can move and establish our uh, our, pre our priority. Okay, so let me set the timer so that we end on time. Okay. Okay, I will get a hybrid view for a moment because I think um, you know the, these two red boxes here in the restorming. So the importance of sharing training materials and how to build bridges between top-down policies and bottom-up initiatives. Um, is very important for uh, for the first, let's say, part here. So how can we ease the access to community content about open science and how we can support uh, the community creators, the community managers at making this content available? Because often you already have, uh, the community already have a website uh, with the trainings, with webinars, and so on. So uh, now it's time to open <laughs> your mind. So explore whatever comes to 
to your mind, use your fantasy. So if you would have a, a gateway for your community, what would you expect to see? You know, in the homepage, because now the gateway, I think, is very focused to the discovery part of the story. So you go there, you search, you find what you need, and um, and this is the reuse. So it's part of the open science practices. Uh, but there is more, you know, there is much more. So maybe we are too much focused on this and we should have a homepage that highlights also other things. There is a comment in the chat uh, from uh, Norma. As a benefit, we could not just consider to have gateways for huge terms, but also for multidisciplinary important terms with less research and spread in many repositories around the world. For example, North American studies. Yes, thanks Norma to, to raise this point. It's very important. Uh, because it's when we talk about research communities, we usually tend to think about one discipline. Uh, but in fact, we can also um, have a gateway for a research topic. And the research topic is typically uh, involving more than one discipline. So for example, uh, the study, the studies, the North American studies, they you know, you, you, you have studies in, uh, in terms of uh, economics, in terms of uh, political uh, liaisons or uh, migration. And um, so there are a lot of disciplines involved. And this is one example. Uh, also in the, in the keynote uh, this morning, we heard about other, you know, uh, examples where uh, you approach a research uh, topic, but you need input from different disciplines in order to achieve the results that you want to achieve. So I don't know, uh, let's go here. So here again, this is for uh, transport research, but we can also use the COVID-19. We are more familiar, maybe. Uh, not very nice, but we are. Okay, so if you reach a gateway about you know, COVID-19 and you want to do open science on this topic, what, what would you expect to see? Because Okay, we start to have uh, some suggestions. So hot topics, most cited papers, and top 10 authors, organizations. Yes. And we have use cases on the best practices uses using the connect service. Okay, so like um, experience, uh, successful experience of users uh, that use the gateway, or maybe also experience um, with other um, of other research communities, so that you know the researchers using the gateway can get inspired from another uh, from another research communities. This is a good suggestion, yeah. So 
Uh, meanwhile, we can go also uh, to the second point. Of course, if you have a suggestion for the first, uh, please keep writing. And the second point is how we could uh, let the researchers know about existing services for open science. And they can be services of open air, so Argos for data management plan, for example, Amnesia for data anonymization. Then we have the search API and the, and the dumps of the metadata records that can be used, for example, to build additional uh, services. Um, and this is something that we are uh, doing, for example, with the triple project for the social science and humanities community. Uh, but also, you know, communities may have their own services already in place for data analysis, for uh, exchanging experience via, you know, wiki or forum. Uh, so should we reserve, for example, a dedicated area of the gateway for, for this kind of uh, connection with the services? Do you think they would be useful? Also for a promotion of, uh, of these services in the community. Okay, I see a question on the chat. Alessia, can you explain what is a dump? I think, uh, okay, the, the, a dump, yes, it's, it's a technical word, you're right. It's basically uh, a data set uh, which contains the metadata records. Well, in this case, it's, it's a data set with metadata records about the research products of the communities. And uh, basically, we publish this data set in, uh, in Zenodo in JSON format. And from, let's say, the, the, the nerds call it dump. But in fact, we can, I should have renamed it as with a more clear word. Thank you. Sometimes the technicians that listen in me. So basically, it's this one. Okay, this is the, the position of our dump for research communities and the initiatives. So this is the, the position, these are the files. And each uh, file basically it's a data set, which contains the metadata of the publications, software, data sets, and other types of research products that we identified as relevant for reach of the community. So you can find the one for the energy research, you can find the one from for Daria, Europe, or uh, neuroinformatics, and, and so on. And basically the power of this is that uh, the developers of the research communities can get this metadata and can build other services on top of that. Okay, I see that on the first part, you added uh, a nice suggestion about retracted papers. So flag them if they've been part of the community before. Okay. And Zenodo started doing that for, for the most controversial ones. So I guess we we even have some data from Zenodo already, from Zenodo community, COVID-19. Oh, this is interesting. I, I didn't know. Mm -hmm. And then there is this re retraction watch website. Mm -hmm. And I'm a curator, keep an eye on it. So maybe if there is a way to, or maybe that's where annotation actually comes in. So maybe I can annotate that paper with this note that it was yes. retracted. Uh, yes, this can be an option, but I mean, if we have this information, 
as a researcher, I would like to have a filter to, mm -hmm. you know, if I, if I don't want to see them, I just click and they are removed from my search results. Uh, but if instead I want to see everything, I can still see them. But I see that Milica uh, is supporting the annotation. <laughs> the annotation option. Okay. And I was also thinking about promoting open air tool. We have a lot of space at the bottom um, in, in, uh, on the community's homepage where we say supporting organizations. So maybe at least we could say um, related open air tools or something like that. And we could feature Argos and Amnesia and um, some other relative ones. So you, you, you would suggest to, um... Let's say ex exploit the the bottom part of the gateway for, for these. Yeah, at least for the COVID yeah. one, it's it, it looks really empty because open air is the only supporting organizations. So there is a lot of space, and, and it makes sense because open air is supporting organizations. It makes sense to um, mm -hmm. yes, see yeah. it's 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 like really empty. <laughs> yeah, I see, and that, but then we go to the one for the energy research, for example. Yes, but they are, you know, sort of here. So there's still space mm -hmm. indeed. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's take a note. Space. Um, no. Link to. we can use it maybe for the open air tools i would probably you know uh, link to the community services and training materials that the community might already have i would use a more prominent space uh, maybe on the top i have to be honest but uh, these are the kind of things that we can discuss also with the uh, with the designer, uh, I believe, and with the developers. I mean, Argyra is here, so she's taking all the information uh, in order to, to improve uh, the activities. Okay, so in the first part, I also see provide direct link to the community materials for open science. Okay, and I also have a suggestion about browsing by topics uh, so is i mean is this related to the open science material or to the search function to the search functionality uh, to the search functionality okay so we move it below yeah because okay. researchers get lost uh, when they see the search box and they, they usually like to, to have a look at the topics. Okay. Okay, then we have short promotional videos highlighting the most relevant benefits using the Connect. Okay. And we have training and integration in the gateway. And improve the support communication materials to be easy disseminated, reused within research communities. Okay, I can I ask the person who added this to speak up? It was me. <laughs> And then we, <laughs> Andre, Andre. <laughs> so, what you had in mind? I think we, we need to. We we already have some materials, but I think we need to to improve a bit some 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 kind of materials in order to to deliver these support materials to the specific communities in order to showcase how how they can benefit from the gateways. 
in, in, in distinct uh, ways, uh, putting in practice the open science um, practices. Um, how, how, how the gateways can uh, is the, their daily practices, for example. Um, I think we, we should uh, think uh, more about this. Uh, we, by now, we just have uh, support materials explaining the service uh, more broadly and uh, explaining how to, to use the main functionalities. But I think we need to focus more on the the, the benefits uh, more in, in practice in order to, to better sell the, the service. Okay. Thank you, Andre. Yes. So while you keep thinking, I will copy some notes. Um, that we had before, because I think there was already some suggestions. Um, okay. Or maybe it was in the feedback read. Yes, so I will copy these for the selection criteria. Okay, this is for the search. Oops, sorry. This is for the search functionality. So we put it here. And I see a new one here. So clear, clearer steps, nicer interface. So I guess we're talking about the link functionality or the deposit one. Link, okay, thank you, David. <laughs> thank you, David. So maybe you want to highlight uh, which are the steps that were not so clear in your opinion, if you can speak. Yes, I found uh... The process it's um, it's quite simple, but um, yes, some uh, understanding of how the let's see, see of how open area works, um, and um, above all, in case uh, of multiple submission, should be a little bit uh, let's say easier. But I think this can be done uh, working with the user interface designer that can make uh, bigger buttons and uh, explain the required step, which are, I think, three in total. But mm -hmm. uh, I mean, something that it's more appealing for a person that doesn't know so well the portal and, or uh, use it for the first time. Okay, thank you, Davide. And uh, for the rest, uh, submitting uh, DOI, and, uh, this, and uh, this is the only thing needed. I think it's very useful for everyone that wants to use it. So it's very easy to do in general. Thank you. We are just starting our collaboration. So I think that we will have the opportunity also to address these in details uh, with you and maybe together with the designer. Uh, so they always appreciate uh, specific suggestions. Okay, then our time ended. I can see that we have a sticky note here about apply selection criteria horizontally. And I'm not sure I fully understand. So maybe the person who added the sticky note can elaborate. Me, Miriam, I, that's because now you're applying them on the data sources. So if a data source is added by the manager, some selection criteria can be uh, added that are the constraints that we use to select some of the uh, records that come from this data source. And we do it vertically for the data source. Mm -hmm. So 
it should be nice to have them applicable horizontally to everything that we uh, want to uh, add to the community independently from the type of the result. Mm -hmm. Yes, and this is something similar to what Irina suggested for the keywords, for example. Yes. 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 Having this kind of uh, application of the selection criteria, we could do what Irina said. Yes. Good. So I see there are no other comments on the chat. There is so, another very little this. sticky note on point four that I am not able to read. Ah, okay, this is the one I added. It was copied from above, basically, which is the additional criteria applied to the keywords, which is somehow subsumed by yours, which is more generic. So yes, yes. So that's okay. So I have the impression that there are also some other things uh, in the feedback read or in the brainstorming session that we could add. Uh, in this part or, um, or in our roadmap and priorities. So I will double check later because the time is uh, always come, almost come to an end. So I was also wondering uh, yeah. whether we could reach out to Open Air AMCA members uh, and maybe involve them as, as use cases. Uh, so, for example, if they have COVID-19 research in their repositories, ask them to test whether we pick that research in uh, our COVID-19 gateway and also ask them to promote that gateway because it includes their research as well and features their research. Uh, so I don't know, maybe whoever is engaging with uh, with AMCA members could also think about creative engagement strategy for this community dashboard promotion. Uh, yes, this is interesting. Maybe not everyone something... has a repository, but those who do have and who have special collections, I think they'll be interested to, to make yes. sure that they are well featured and also promote open air if they are well featured. Yeah, let me add a note here. Um, so, uh, involve open aramke. Uh, oh, let me zoom, otherwise, okay. Well, that include members of repositories. Uh, feedback about the coverage uh, of the uh, COVID-19 uh, gateway and promote them and promote it researchers. Yes, and, and, COVID this, is could a be and this is a strategy that we should uh, adopt for all the gateways. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what I wanted to say, that it's just one example, because I know it better, but maybe uh, all other topics could also... Mm -hmm. Okay, let me zoom back. So, uh, priorities. We said a lot of things things so let me think on what we can start okay i would say that providing a direct link to the community material for open science is something that is very important and uh, I think it's also very easy. I don't know where the topic goes. Let me try again. Okay. Suck. Okay. So in general, I think that you know adding information about open science practices of the communities is something that we are now missing uh, 
I mean, we, we can add links in the description of the community in the homepage, uh, but it's not, you know, a, a direct link is to find uh, for the community materials about open science. So I think this is something that we can do very, uh, very easy. And another priority that was um, highlighted is the fact that um, was the inclusion of open science practices in the researchers' evaluation career progression. Now, this is not something that a gateway can do because, you know, it's uh, the institutions it's the, that have power on this topic. What we can do is somehow to find a way to uh, highlight how important are the open science practices, how easy they are, um, and that they don't arm the career. But on the other hand, they, you know, they, they, they promote somehow the, the careers of, of the researchers. So I think that, you know, the, the idea of showing the the use case on the adoption uh, of the connect service and the adoption of the best practices of the communities is something that is uh, that is very important and again i don't know where i copied it okay there is a new section in open a newsletter um, which are interviews so maybe uh, if uh, those practices could be highlighted, then open as communication manager could interview people and uh, write this kind of story mm -hmm. about practices and also approaches to research assessment uh, that uh, acknowledge open science practices. Good. Yes, that would be very important. Okay, so uh, we reached the end of our workshop. Unfortunately, we had not enough time to finalize uh, the priority, but uh, I will do it offline and you will still be able to access uh, this mural. So also, if you want to add anything else that we had no time to discuss or you want you know, to put your sticky notes on the priorities on the priority uh, uh, graph please do it so i will not uh, close the world uh, straight away after the meeting so you can still interact with it then of course at some point at some point i will freeze everything because my colleagues and i will have to write a blog post that summarizes the outcome of the workshop and this blog post will be published on the open science uh, fair website so i see one last comment on the chat before we close so it would be good to indicate in open air explore that a particular record output is included in a gateway collection I can see, I cannot see such a link at the moment. This would help promote the connect service. Thanks, Milica, for the suggestion because we we have somehow uh, this information, but we do not offer a direct link from Explore to the gateway where the record is available. So this is this is something that uh, that we could really do to to promote and to let know the wider. Uh, community that we have an open research gateway that serves this particular um, research community or research association. So please do add it uh, to our to our board. This is a very nice idea. 
And about the blog post, what we can do, maybe when you have the first draft, we could share a link uh, with everyone who registered. And if you attend it and if you want to contribute to that blog post, uh, I don't know if Alessia don't, doesn't mind, maybe uh, there could be a certain period, like, I don't know, five days to read and uh, add your comments or suggestions. Uh, and then we could collaboratively also it if, if we want to. Yes, I think this is a good idea, yes. So hope you you don't mind if we email you with with that Google Doc link and uh, if you want to you please feel free to to add to that. Okay, so where is I can stop sharing now. So thank you again for being here at this time of the day, because it's 6 p.m. here, but in some places in Europe, it's 7 or even later. So thank you very much. Your feedback, your ideas were really, really important for us. So we keep in touch and have a nice evening. Thank you. Thank you. Bye.